Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Here be Lord so the Lord is on Dale. Come and is on my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here be Lord so the Dale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord. Wow. Hello, everyone. I hope all is well. I hope that um, you're pressing through and that uh, you know you already have the victory. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, we don't see it, right? Of course, that's the way life is. But we know we have the victory in Jesus when we are in Christ, right? There's the key to be hidden. To be hidden. Hallelujah. Um, he has something really profound that he wants to talk about. And, um, man, he's so amazing, you know. Jesus is just so good. You ever heard me say that before? <laughs> it's the story of my life, right? Okay, so I'm going to Isaiah 49, starting at verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Listen. O coastlands to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. And made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Does anyone feel like they've been hidden by God? Oh, I feel the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you feel like you've been hidden by God. Yeah, and you know the truth is you have. <laughs> for, for His glory. For His purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you would use me as your vessel, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you would use me to speak to your beloved children, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you would use me to encourage and edify and send even further and deeper into your will, your presence, your purpose, Lord. I thank you for everything. I thank you for all of it. For everything that you allow us to endure just shapes us to be more like you, Jesus. It shapes us to be more prepared for the future that you have for us, Lord. And I say, here I am. Just use me, Lord, but remove me. Remove my flesh. Let it be your spirit alone. Your spirit alone. Your spirit alone. This speaks whatever it is you want to say to your children, Lord. And I thank you in advance. I thank you for all of this. In your mighty, holy, precious name, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's precise. The Lord is precise. You know, he is so precise. Precision. He is a master of skill. He is, he is beyond uh, our comprehension of intelligence. And so what we deem to be unnecessary, what we deem to be unfit, what we deem to be unfair is, is often what he will use to prepare and to position you to be in that place. You see, he's been showing me, <laughs> he's been showing me, um, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's been showing me arrow and arrow and a bow, you know. And, and, and it's quite 
interesting that my son, he loves this kind of stuff. He's 14 and he just loves, you know, bows and arrows and he, you know, he whittles wood and etc. And just, I walk in from work and there he is. <laughs> There's no coincidence with God. He's been downloading this word for, for a couple few days. And, and, and I walk in from work, and there my son is. He's got the bow in his hand, and he says, Mom, you know, where can I put this where it'll be out of the way? And it's like, hmm. And I just, I was quiet, and I just looked at it, you know. I just looked, and I'm just like, God, you're so good. You know, and I was just looking at the bow. And it's so... um you know, it's it's so detailed, right? I mean, it's just so precise. That is our God. You know, we are the arrow. We are the arrows, you know? And, you know, he was just talking to me about, mm, you know, what is required for us to become that precise arrow, right? What is required for us to be, you know, that arrow that will be the right trajectory, that arrow that will hit the right angle, that arrow that will be just shaped correctly and molded just right for the purpose that, that it's set out for. And, and you think about this, you know, some arrows we shoot at deer. Some arrows we shoot at buffalo. Some arrows we shoot at, you know, who knows? I mean, all these different purposes, right? But this is a time, and the Lord is, is so sure about this word. This is a time where there are many who, who have who've been through, you know, just just a large amounts of preparation. Um, and I believe, you know, obviously from, from the time of birth, you know, um, but but this is a season, okay? This is a season of where, you know, you kind of feel as though you're being pulled back. You know, you kind of feel as though you're not getting anywhere. You kind of feel as though, hey, you know, Lord, where's my breakthrough? You know, why is it that, you know, you're allowing all these, you know, attacks from the enemy? You know, why is it that the people that, that I love the most, the people that are closest to me, um, they don't even know me, Lord. And so, you know, he was just talking to me. I mean, all day he was just talking to me and, you know. It's so interesting the way that God works. And, you know, although we could never really comprehend him in his fullness, right? We'll, we'll never be able to figure him out um, all the way. And I think that's the beauty of it. You know, it's a, it's a journey to, to, you know, search him out and to, to say, Lord, what are you doing? You know, Lord, what do you want me to see? You know, and, and to cry our tears, right? And to pray our prayers, right? Because let's be real. You know, the people that he is prepared and he's about to just, bah, he's going to shoot you. And, and you know if this word is for you, he's going to shoot you. And you see, you've been pulled back for so long, for so many years. This is your season. This is your final preparation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he, he said, he said, you know, he said, in order for this arrow that you are to be, to be, you know, um, to make it to the, the goal, you know, it's got to be molded just right you know and, and and he was speaking to me about i know you know many of you have been through the fire you've been through you know that place of you know where you died to yourself right but there but there's always more and he said you know i i may have to put that metal back in the fire <laughs> that's what he said i'm just repeating what the lord said he said you know i might have to put that 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 metal back in in the fire because you know um then i can remold it i can reshape it i see where you know the the trajectory it isn't quite right yet okay and then and i and we praise him for that right we thank him for that right because we're we, we want to bring honor to our king we want to bring glory to jesus name right it's all about him hallelujah Yes, I hear you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's the thing. You know, you, you've made a choice of it. You've made a decision that you will go through whatever is required to be a good soldier, to, to move forward, to walk forward, to, to go wherever he wants to send you. And oftentimes what is required is a remolding, a reshaping. But you see, here's the thing. And this was the, one of the main points <coughs> of this word is that um hidden arrows it wasn't just us i hear you lord it wasn't just us you know we are 
a, a, a chosen priesthood, a royal generation. We've been hidden in his quiver. We've been hidden, you know, in his in his pouch of arrows, right? And he's just waiting on the right moment when when they're ready and, and when time is ready, when when time is catching up to eternity. But you see, there was another part and and then and the deeper part. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for preparation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, these hidden arrows represented the pain of, 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 of your past. Um, and not just your past, but your, your current. The pain of, you know, where you are right now, of, 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 of that person that God has allowed to be in your life to, 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 to make you right. <laughs> I hear you, Lord. You know, um, that person that Satan tried to kill you with. Or, or you know, that, that situation maybe. But this is more of, you know, a, a people. You know, the Lord was just telling me and, and explaining to me that, you know, maybe there's arrows in your back that you don't see. Hmm. Maybe there's arrows, right, that you thought you pulled out and maybe you did, right? Maybe you let God pull these arrows out, right? But there's still a little peace in there. You know, you got a little piece of metal left or, you know, the wound is not healed yet. Okay. And he was really talking to me about how his, his, um, his healing works and how, you know, he, he uses the very thing or the very person that, that Satan would try and kill you with to make you and shape you into who he wants you to be. And I pray that somebody catch this. Can it be lot of something Yes, Lord. So, I'm going to share something that's very personal because he wants me to. There was a time when, um, you know, I was not only addicted to um, pills and, and alcohol and, and weed and, you know, just the world, just all of it. But I, I was um, suicidal and I had my suicide planned out, right? <laughs> I knew not only um, how I was going to do it, <clears throat> but I knew who was going to find me, okay? So I knew when, I knew how, uh, and I knew who was going to find me, but even deeper. The reason that I had picked this person um, was because that uh, this person, Satan, had used this person to utterly hurt me um <clears throat> throughout my entire life yes lord um from the time i was very young and um i wanted to get them back yeah i said that i'm just being real here because i think what the world needs is real the world doesn't need sugar-coated people look it's real we're in a battle and it's real and I wanted this person to pay for all of the hurt and the pain and the shame and not just the arrows that they had talked behind my back, but all of the horrible things they had said to my face, all of the death that they had spoken over me. And it was so much pain and shame and I wanted them to pay. And thank you, Jesus, that you never let that happen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're so worthy. But you see, the thing of it is, is it wasn't them. And although, you know, I'm always talking about we don't fight flesh and blood because we don't. But oftentimes, those very people that are so very close to our hearts, it's hard to separate. It's hard to say, okay, you know, we don't fight flesh and blood. But wait, this is my dad. This is my mom. This is my daughter. This is my son. You know, it's hard when it's so close to home, right? But why would Satan use those people who you don't know, why would he use those people that you don't love? No, it's not how he works. He will use those very people that you just want to love you. 
That's who he'll use. He'll use those people, in fact, that are supposed to just love you. Or, you know, as he showed me earlier, he'll remove people. He, he will use the absence of people to try to destroy you. You know, like say you never had, you know, a, a mother or a father or, you know, you never had any children or you never got married, you know, etc., etc. You know, see, Satan is very strategic. And he he's always looking for what? Ultimately, not only to destroy but to kill, to steal our lives. And if he can get us to take our own lives, wow, he's won. Wow. I don't know. Geneve Lara Sotereo, have it is on Dia. But you know, here's the thing. We have to love them anyway, right? And not just that, but we have to see past what is happening. We have to see beyond um, what Satan is doing through through these people that we love the most and we have to understand their pain You see because hurt people they hurt people and um, That's just what happens. It's just what we do when you were hurt you hurt someone when I was hurt I hurt a whole bunch of people, you know and see in this hour in this time the Lord is is really <clears throat> He's showing us our heart and he's showing us the, the things we thought were healed, you know, the things we thought were, were over with, the things we thought we would, we had, you know, we'd gotten over it, you know, we're okay, this is, you know, I'm okay and I know, you know, that, that, that person put me through, oh, way so much, too much, but, but I'm over it, I forgave them and, you know, I give them grace and I give them mercy and well, what about when they do it again? And what about when Satan continues to use this person to try and destroy you, to try and, um, yes, you know, accuse you, to try and break your heart, right? Um, because hurt people hurt people. And um, we, can, we can love on people all day long. We can give them the grace of God. We can show them, you know, the, the utmost respect and the, and, the, and the most gracious mercy and, you know, kindness and, you know, you know acts of, you know, um, gifts and etc. But if they don't know the love of God, if they don't know how much they are loved by God, okay, then here comes Satan. And he's going to come in and he's going to twist it and he's going to torment them. And some people, let's just be real, some people have been tormented their entire lives. And it's just the way of, their, you know, it's just how they live. They don't know any different. Maybe it started from the time they were a little kid, you know, um, and, and there's pathways to pain, right? There's, there's generally, there's trauma and then, and there's, there's things that were out of their control, you know, but <clears throat> Satan will use these people to to try and hurt you and destroy you and in this hour what it really is is it's an identity issue it's an identity attack and um, we know that they don't know who they are if they did they they wouldn't do that no no way would they try and make you earn their love um, no way would they tell you you're not good enough no way would nothing be right in their eyes. No, they would overlook your flaws like God does. Because you see, here's the thing. He loves you anyway. Even when you mess up. Even when you know you're wrong. Even when you make a mistake. and Or even when you're doing everything great, He loves you the same. His love never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is consistent, okay? But when, when someone doesn't know him, when they don't know his goodness, when they haven't personally experienced it, they will look at you, child of God, and they will want what you have, but they don't know how to get it. And here comes Satan to twist it, and here he comes to lie to them. And to show them how you're flawed and, and to, to show them how you're wrong and to show them how you're not good enough and to show them how you don't love them. Why? Because they don't feel loved. Because they really don't know love. Because they've never really experienced love. And this is the hour we're in. We're in an identity crisis, but, but we, we're coming out of it.
and and we're at a place where God wants you to walk in your identity. God wants you to walk in who he's called you to be. And he wants you to do it without shame. He wants you to shine your light no matter what they say. It, it, it's a time where Kalawada Soloai, Hanabere Sontereo, Kavalara Sontia. You know, he's been speaking to me about new wine for, for weeks now. And, it, and it's what's happening. But we know that in order for that to occur... The material has to be stretched, right? But this is a time where he doesn't want you to dim your light anymore. He doesn't want you to be afraid that you shine too bright, okay? He says, shine anyway. You see, I know the darkness doesn't like it. But I created you to be this. I made you to shine in your brightness. I made you in my image. I've molded you. I've shaped you. Now shine, shine shine and don't worry about your light offending the darkness and even those people you love with everything you have because if you allow it satan will use them to dim your light to to condemn your shine to make you feel guilty to make you feel ashamed to make you question your identity and child of god there is no condemnation in Christ. There is no condemnation in Jesus. We are made to be who He is. We are made to shine who He represents. We are made in His image, in His goodness, in His grace. And you know what? When we mess up, that's okay. When we're not good enough, that's okay. We never could be. We never could be. You see, that's the thing. That's the beauty of His grace and His mercy that we could never measure up. But, but here's it, you know, here's the thing. If you've never experienced that love, if you've never experienced that goodness, it's hard to accept it. You know, it's hard to look at someone who seems to have it all together, but you know they tell you they don't. <laughs> It's, it, you just, you know, oh, you think you're perfect. Oh, you've got it all figured out. Even though you tell them time and time again, you're nothing without Jesus. But it's not even them, child of God. It's not even them. I hear you, Lord. He says, very soon. He says, very soon I'm going to remove you from toxic people. He says, very soon I'm going to remove you from that toxic person. He said, but until then, until then, until then, I need you to endure. I need you to endure. I need you to endure. And here's the thing. I need you to walk away. I need you to walk away. No, it isn't rude. Just walk away. You know, he had a silhouette of today. Yes, Lord, I hear you, Jesus. You know, when you study the Word of God and, and you study Jesus, you know, you study our great Savior. You know, look at what he did. Look at what he did. When they were accusing him, I mean, he was on the verge of being hung on the cross. I mean, he literally was on trial, right? And and here comes, um, you know, Pilate, Pilate, whatever. I, I'm not good with pronunciations. And, and he says, you know, well, you did this and you did this and you don't have anything to say. You know, I've got the power to, to condemn you. I've got power to, to kill you. And Jesus said, no, you don't. The only power you have is what God's given you. And see, that's where we need to be. We need to know our identity. We need to be so strong in the Lord that it doesn't matter what even the closest person to us says because it's a test. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Yeah, many of you are passing that test in this hour, my God. Thank you, Jesus. If this is you, you know it, because you're rejoicing. You know why? Because you're learning to walk away. You're learning not to defend yourself. You're learning that you don't have to say anything God will. And He will. All we have to do is be still. He will defend us. And here's the sad part about it, children of God. It's, it's, so, it's so sad, you know, that... That same person will cry and they will they will shed tears and they will be sorry. They will honestly be sorry. They will hate themselves for hurting you because 
they love you. They just don't know real love. But as much as they can, they love you. And they'll be so sorry. And they'll say sorry. And they'll say, I'll try. I don't want to do this again. And here comes Satan. And, and here it is again, you know. Um, and they, they can't help it. Why? Because you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. What's the truth? That Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. What's the truth? That you were perfectly and wonderfully made, beautifully created for, a, a, you know, a masterpiece in his hands. And um, that you were chosen. And that, that he loves you and nothing can separate you from his love. And, and on and on and on. And as you digest the truth, you will be set free. And, and these, this person, these people, they're not set free. You know, they're, they're in bondage. They, they, um, they're in bondage. And in, in that place of bondage, in that place of chains, here comes Satan. And he can easily, you know, um, twist. The truth, right? Because he comes with a half lie. You know, he doesn't come as, you know, this big, mean, burly Satan. And he's all red and he's got a, he's got, you know, whatever it is. You know, horns. No! No! He comes as 98% truth. Or, you know, whatever. He makes it look so good. And we have to have compassion and mercy to understand it. Now, there is a place and a boundary that we must be setting in this hour that says enough is enough, Satan. Because while we love this person, we, we can't coddle the demon. We can't coddle Satan. We must, um, you know, rise up. We must rise up. And, and you know what it really is? I hear you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. It really is that love never fails. <laughs> you know, Satan would say, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that for them anymore. They don't appreciate you anyway. Why are you still doing this? Why are you still doing that? Why are you still being nice to them? Why are you still serving them every day? Why are you, why? You know why? Because God loved me when I was wretched. Because when I mess up, God's still right there to hold his hand out. Because I want to be like him. Because I want to be like Jesus. And you see, this is a season that, that when this, when this, you know, preparation, when this season is coming to a close, which it's not going to last very long, he's going to shoot you. And, and, you know, you know, think about this, it's a shaking. And if you think about, you have the arrow and you pull it back and it's so tight that it shakes, right? It just shakes. I don't know if any of you have ever shot a bow and arrow, but it is. I mean, you have to be stronger than you realize. Hallelujah. I hear you, Lord. Yeah, and there's a shaking going on and also a strengthening going on right now, you know, but he has had you hidden for his glory and his purpose. But see, you know, it's not just about the hidden arrow that you are, but it's about those hidden arrows that are still in your back or those still those hidden arrows that are in pieces. You know, you got part of it out. OK, and this is a time where he's mending you up. He's making you completely whole in his love. And if this is for you, you'll know it. You know, it'll sit with your spirit. You'll just know it. Yes, Lord. I hear you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He had me to look up. Yes. He had me to look up um, Matrix, which, you know, what did it say? It says, from the Matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. You know, when you think of Matrix, you know, you almost think of a made-up world. <laughs> and that's kind of where we were, right? You know, we thought we knew what was really going on, but we had no idea when we were lost, you know. So, matrix, an environment or material in which something develops a surrounding medium or structure. And so, the Lord was really speaking to me about how, you know, he had to allow you to be in that fire for so very long. You know, um, the very person that Satan tried to use to kill you is that same very person that God is using or has used to mold and shape your character to be like Jesus. And the matrix is, um, it's needed. You know, although it's so painful, we have to get past that feeling, right? We have to understand um, the spiritual realm and we have to know, you know... Um, 
Yeah, I hear you, Lord. It's so simple, but so hard. How to love the unlovable. <laughs> you know, I guess it's easy when it's not someone that is so dear to you, right? And I think it really is the challenge of when it's someone so close, you know, and Kali, you don't even know me, you know, and that's the thing. Yes, I hear you, Lord. And that's the thing. That's the assault in, in this time. And, and I think in the future, at, at a different, you know, level, um, because you'll be prepared and you'll understand. And um, you'll be, see, that's the thing. He prepares us. You're going to be prepared for those identity attacks when it's somebody you don't really know, right? You know, if, if one of the closest people to you doesn't recognize the new you, then it won't hurt as much when it's someone you don't really know or, you know, love, like, you know, you love. And, and yes, Lord, I hear you. So I'm just following the Spirit, and I thank you, Jesus, because I know this is going to help somebody. As you're ministering to me, you're ministering to somebody else, and I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. 1 John 3.1 Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. That's deep. You know, you think about that. What does that mean? That means anyone and everyone, no matter who they are, if they don't know Him, they won't really know us. They won't recognize who we really are in Christ. And oftentimes, those people that have been in our lives, our whole lives, um, many of them will never see. Some will, but some won't. They will not ever see the new you. Why? Because they're blinded. They're blinded by Satan. And um, this is an hour of, of decision. Mm. Mm. Yeah, wow. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, don't let anyone stop your shine. And I'm saying this to myself as well. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I looked up the word quiver. <clears throat> this word is the rendering of the Hebrew. Ah, telly, which is used rather to mean... A suspended weapon, literally, that which hangs from one, suspended from the shoulder or girdle. And child of God, I want to encourage you, this is your time. This is your hour where he shoots you and he catapults you, okay? And this word is not for everybody, although it may help everybody, okay, in some way. But this word, uh, uh, he's going to shoot you. Okay, and, and you're going to know if this word is for you. Um, and this word can be for anyone, right? When we're positioned and we're pr prepared and we're seeking out the Lord uh, with, with all our heart and all our mind and all our soul and all our strength, all everything we have, right? But be encouraged that this shaking that you're experiencing and this, this heartache, and this, this indecisiveness. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Thank you, Jesus. You're just being repositioned. <laughs> yes, my Lord. You're just being repositioned. He had me to look that up. Um, you are just being repositioned. And if you think about the bow and the arrow, you know, he's got to have the, the arrow just right. It's got to be positioned just right. And who does that positioning? You know, oftentimes we like to think it's us. <laughs> we're wrong it's not us at all all we do is surrender and he does the rest he will do the rest if we would just rest what does he say come to me all ye who are burdened and heavy laden and i will give you rest matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 i encourage you just to ponder those two three verses they're just so deep and so amazing um, but you're just being repositioned. You're being repositioned for greatness. You're being repositioned for the next level purpose. You're being repositioned, um, hallelujah, out of the wilderness, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because, see, you know, you, you're prepared people. <laughs> 
You're a prepared people. You are a secret weapon. You are a secret weapon. Why? Because you're a nobody, right? Um, you are somebody. He loves you, but but in in the in the world, nobody knows you. You know the unknowns. This is an hour of the unknowns. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, I caught of it. It's a day. Wow. Whoo! Hallelujah. You know, he he said those of you pray in my will. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, "Hallowed be my name." My kingdom come, my will be done, here on earth as it is in heaven. This is what he's saying. He said, those who pray my will, those who pray my will, those who go through what they have to endure for my will, because oftentimes it's not pretty. It's not fancy. It doesn't feel good. It's not comfortable. But you know what? Neither was that cross. Neither was that shame. And that rejection that our Lord and Savior endured. It wasn't pretty. In fact, it was more pain than we could ever experience. But he did it. And he did it out of love. And that's the thing. You're in a place where it's not about you anymore. It's not about you at all. It's about laying your life down for the brethren. Because there's no greater love. There's no greater love. There's no greater love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will be crushed. And you will be crushed again. And you will be crushed again. And you will continue to be crushed. To, to carry the glory of God. To carry the anointing and the increase and the mantle that He's given you in this season. And rejoice in it. Cry your tears. I bawl my eyes out lately. And I tell you what, in the same sense, I tell Him, Thank you, Jesus. And I want to be real. I don't want to be, oh, I'm okay, I've got it all together. No, I am broken. I live in a fallen world. People are hurting. Hurt people hurt people. I want to keep it real. And so I'm going to be transparent for the Lord Jesus and for you and for myself. Because there's nothing better than when you're being you, right? And don't let anybody take that away from you. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they think. You be the you that the Spirit of Lord, the Lord has made you to be. Catch that. The Spirit of the Lord is in you, working a mighty thing in you to, to make you more like Him. And be you in this moment. Be the you that He's created you to be. Now, in a week, it might be somebody even a little better, right? Praise God. So, divine repositioning. The best position for you in life is that which God has ordained for you. Due to the lack of spiritual foresight and invariability in invariably divine guidance, I'm sorry, a lot of people do not attain the height that God has made their portion. Mm. Can't even lot us at the loy. Yeah, it takes tenacity. Amen. Amen. This is a time of divine repositioning. And it really is. And I don't think that it's just a, a small thing. I believe that this is a large scale thing. And what the Lord is doing in this hour is he's revealing um, those hidden ones. He's revealing um, those those um, <clears throat> forsaken ones. <clears throat> He's revealing those rejected ones. And what you will find in this hour, if this word is for you, is that you are rejoicing over being that person. <laughs> That you can rely on God and God alone. That your strength comes from Jesus Christ and not man. That you can be who he has made you to be. And you can do it with joy. And you can do it with peace. Because if your heart is not condemning you before God. Hallelujah. And when it does. You can go to him. And you can tell him that you're sorry. And that's the beauty of it. You know. Um, this life is a learning lesson. And there's never a plateau where we've reached it and we know it all, you know. And we can always be better. We can always strive to be more like Christ. And um, this is really a great moment in time. 
sometimes the greatest moments don't feel very good you know but through it we're, we're gaining wisdom we're gaining knowledge we are becoming ah uh, hmm, we are becoming my lord we are becoming we are becoming he says oh just wait for it this next season this next season this next season and i believe that the greatness that he's tapping into inside of us right now is is going to who i hear you lord he says catapult you but i believe also it's going to you know uh fish fish the men you know fish the people the anointing is just it's so powerful to draw them in it's so powerful to draw them in you know and be candid be real be the you that god has made you to be don't compare yourself to anybody but jesus we're all made beautiful and we're all made different that's the glory of it we look different we talk different we we act a little different and we have a different purpose you know but we work together and it can be so beautiful when we work together to harvest the earth the harvest is here <laughs> hallelujah the harvest is here it's here and it's plenty you know and, and um i just want to be a worker lord lord i just want to be a worker lord i thank you jesus lord i thank you jesus i ask for you to come in lord to anybody that might hear this word whether it be right now lord or whether it be in the future lord that you would come into their heart lord that you would heal those hidden pains that you would bring them up to their face that you would show them these things so that they may be prepared and positioned to be catapulted by you lord jesus that they might be ready to be your arrow in your quiver lord that they might be in that place where you can use them for your glory mightily lord i ask that you heal our hearts lord that you give us further direction that you show us how to love the unlovable and those that have hurt us so deeply for so long in so many ways lord that you give us your grace that you give us your eyes to see that you give us your ears to hear lord that you make us better through all of these battles that you give us a strong sense of our identity that you give us a strong sense of our identity that you give us a strong sense of who we are in you lord that we may not be shaken that we may not be shaken that we may not be shaken hallelujah you see i praise you jesus because I know that everything we go through, it would just bring out the greatness that you have made, that you have created, that you have destined from the foundation of the earth, Lord. And I thank you for this because I know where two or more are gathered in agreement that you are in the midst and that you will be sure to complete this. And so I thank you for this healing balm that you are releasing right now over your people, Lord. I thank you for, for giving us the courage and the strength to walk in who you've called us to be, Lord. I thank you that we can push the distractions to the side and the things that Satan would put in our face, that we can just push it away and walk in love and grace and your mighty mercy and strength. And, oh, Lord, that we would know you more that we would go deeper with you lord that we would know you more that we would just get to know you more that we would have a, a ever increase in your presence lord jesus because ultimately that's what it is and that's the only thing that's going to get it done it's going to complete it it's your presence it's your presence we just want more more of you lord more of you lord more of you lord to finish it and less of us and less of us Hallelujah, in your mighty, holy, precious name. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He is sure. He who, complete, who, who began a work in you will be sure to complete it until that day of Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means we're already there. We don't see it yet, but we're there in eternity with him. Picture this. Picture that place. He's there. He's waiting on that day. And, and we can focus on that day. And we can focus on being done with this place. Because one day, because one day, one day we'll be there. 
will be there with him and um, we'll reign, we'll reign. We suffer for the kingdom of heaven. We, we push back darkness and um, we win. We never lose. There's no loss. Hey, I hear you, Lord. He says there's no loss in love. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, my Lord. Oh, I pray this bless somebody. I pray this bless somebody. I pray this encourage somebody. I love you all. I love you all so much, but he loves you more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.